standardized or um, very pagan, but I say uh, it doesn't have to be. It can uh, be quite a fun holiday. I think the real purpose of Halloween is to um, show death in darkness. You're not afraid of it by making fun of it and by facing it. And uh, I don't agree with people who do seances or sort of occult rituals, I think that's very dangerous, but um, I, I still think that, you, you know, Halloween's a very good holiday, if you let it be, it's, it's the day before All Saints Day, um, now, granted, I wish people would invite me to Halloween parties, they never seem to, uh, that's why I'm throwing my own, well, technically it's not a Halloween party, it's an All Saints Day party that I'm having tomorrow, but uh, for tonight I have nothing to do. So I thought I would read you some tales of Edgar Allan Poe, which when I do I will uh, stop whispering because you won't be able to hear me, and I will drop the faux British accent because he's an American author. I uh, am filming on my portable old camera because I'm having a lot of trouble with YouTube lately. My computer is getting very old, so I think it'll be easier if I film it on this camera, even though it's harder to control the quality and sound. Uh, so I do apologize that the sound picture quality is a little bit less than you've gotten used to, but uh, I haven't updated in a year and a half anyway, so you should be happy you're getting anything. I'm just joking. So anyway, uh, let's read some Edgar Allan Poe. I'm just going to um, read randomly here and there. I'm not necessarily going to read the whole story of anything, just parts here and there, whatever strikes my fancy. Also, I only have uh, 20 more minutes of memory on this camera, so it might cut out in the middle. Uh, if it does, I'm going to upload it anyway. Just, uh, it is what it is. I know many people are doing very fancy edit videos for ASMR lately, and they're amazing. But, uh, quite frankly, I haven't got the uh, time or the equipment to do that. And, uh, some people seem to enjoy it anyway, so. But, uh, it doesn't mean that, uh, I love, I love all the fancy videos too. Anyway, let us begin. low in the heavens, and I had been passing alone on horseback through a singularly dreary tract of country, and at length found myself, as the shades of evening drew on, within view of the melancholy house of Usher. I know not how it was, but, with the first glimpse of the building, a sense of insufferable gloom pervaded my spirit. I say insufferable, for the feeling was unrelieved by any of the half-pleasurable, because poetic sentiment with which the mind usually receives even the sternest natural images of the desolate or terrible. I looked upon the scene before me, upon the mere house and the simple landscape features of the domain, upon the bleak walls, upon the vacant eye-like windows, upon a few rank sledges, and upon a few white trunks of decayed trees, with an utter desperation of soul which I can compare to no earthly sensation, more properly than the after-dread of the reveler upon opium the bitter lapse into everyday life, the hideous dropping off of the veil. It was an iciness, a sinking, a sickening of the heart, an unredeemed dreariness of thought which no goading of the imagination could torture into aught of the sublime. What was it, I paused to think, what 
it was that so unnerved me at the contemplation of the house of Usher. It was a mystery, mystery all insoluble, nor could I grapple with the shadowy fancies that crowd upon me as I pondered. I was forced to fall back upon the unsatisfactory conclusion that while beyond doubt there are combinations of very simple natural objects which have power thus affecting us, still the analysis of this, of this power lies considerations beyond our depths. It was possible, I reflected, that a mere different arrangement of the particulars of the scene, of the details of the picture, would be sufficient to modify, or perhaps to annihilate its capacity for sorrowful impression. And acting upon this idea, I reined my horse and to the precipitous brink of the black and lurid tarn that lay in an unruffled luster by the dwelling and gazed down, but with a shudder even more thrilling than before, upon the remodeled and inverted images of the gray sedge and the ghastly tree stems and the vacant and eye-like windows. Nevertheless, in this mansion of gloom I now proposed to myself a sojourn of some weeks. The proprietor, Roderick Usher, had been one of my boon companions in my boyhood, but many years has elapsed since our later last meeting. A letter, however, had lately reached me in a distant part of the country, a letter from him which, in its wildly importune nature, had admitted of no other than a personal reply. The MS gave evidence of nervous agitation. The writer spoke of acute bodily illness, of a mental disorder which oppressed him and of an earnest desire to see me as his best and indeed his only personal friend, with a view of attempting by the cheerfulness of my society some alleviation of his malady. It was a manner in which all this and much more was said. It was the apparent heart that went into his request, which allowed me no room for hesitation, and I accordingly obeyed forthwith what I was still considered a very singular summons. So if you enjoyed that, I suggest you read The Fall of the House of Usher. It's a very good story. That was just the first two paragraphs. There's a lot of very rich description in there. I wonder what voice you guys like best. Is it this sort of a uh, croaky in and out whispering? Or is it the sort of monotone reading I'm doing now? Or is it, was it the faux British accent really up close to the mic? Feel free to call it if you what you like best. Anyway, that's all I'm going to read to The Fall of the House of Usher. It's a very, very long story. I'm about to pen, I neither expect nor solicit belief. Bad indeed would I be to expect it, in a case where my very senses rejected their own evidence. Yet mad I am not, and very surely do I not dream. But tomorrow I die, and today I would unburden my soul. My immediate purpose is to place before the world plainly, succinctly, and without comment, a series of mere household events. And their consequences, these events have terrified, have tortured, have destroyed me. Yet I would not attempt to expound them. To me they have presented little but horror. The many, to many they will seem less terrible than Baroque's. Hereafter, perhaps, some intellect may be found will to reduce my phantasm to the commonplace. Some intellect more calm, more logical, and far less excitable than my own, which would perceive in the circumstances I detail with awe nothing more than an ordinary succession of the very nature 
of causes and effects. From my infancy, I was noted for the odd facility of humanity of my disposition. My tenderness of heart was even so conspicuous as to make me the jest of my companions. I was especially fond of animals and was indulged by my parents with a great variety of pets. With these I spent most of my time and was never so happy as when feeding and caressing them. This particularity of my character grew with my growth, and in my manhood I derived from it one of my principal sources of pleasure. To those who have cherished an affection for a faithful and sagacious dog, I need hardly be at the trouble of explaining the nature and intensity of the gratification thus deliberable. There is something in the unselfish and self-sacrificing love of a brute which goes directly to the heart of him who has had frequent occasion to test the paltry friendship and gossamer fidelity of mere man. So that's the first beginning of the black cat. Let me see how much time I have left. in an early draft of one of my videos, probably on the same camera, so it's like an early draft again. That's another voice I'm doing, a weird up and down voice, kind of insane. Comment which one you like best and which one you like least. The sledges with the bells, silver bells. What a world of merriment their melody foretells. How they tinkle, tinkle, tinkle in the icy air of night. While the stars they oversprinkle, and the heavens seem to twinkle with a crystalline light. Keeping time, 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 in a sort of runic rhyme. To the tinnitinabulation that so musically wells. From the bells, 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 bells from the jingling and the tinkling of the bells. Hear the mellow wedding bells, golden bells. What a world of happiness their harmony foretells. Through the balmy air of night, how they ring out their delight. From the molten golden note, and all in tune with liquid ditty floats. And the turtle doves that listen while she gloats on the moon. Oh, from out the sounding cells, what a gush of euphony voluminously wells. How it swells, how it dwells, oh, in the future how it tells of the rapture that impels to the swinging and the ringing of the bells, 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 of the bells, 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 to the rhyming and the chiming of the bells. Hear the loud alarm bells, brazen bells, what a tale of terror now their turbulency tells in the startled ear of night. How they scream out there of fright, too much horrified to speak. They can only shriek, shriek out of tune. In the clamorous appealing of the mercy of the fire, in the mad expulsion with the death and frantic fire, leaping higher, 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 with a desperate desire, and a resolute endeavor now to sit or never by the side of the pale-faced moon. Oh, the bells, 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 what a tale of terror, tales of despair. How they clang and clash and roar, what a horror they outpour on the bosom of the palpitating air. Yet the ear it fully knows by the twanging and the clanging how the danger ebbs and flows. Yet the ear distinctly tells in the jangling and the wrangling how the danger sinks and swells in the sinking and the swelling and the anger of the bells, of the bells, of the bells, 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 in the clamor and the clangor of the bells. Hear the tolling of the bells, iron bells. What a world of solemn thought their melody compels. In the silence of the night, how we shiver with fright. In the melancholy menace of their tone. For every sound that floats from the rust within their throats is a groan. And the people, ah, the people, 
they that dwell up in that steeple all alone, and who tolling, 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 in the muffled monotone, feel a glory in so rolling on the human heart a stone. They are neither man nor woman, they are neither brute nor human. They are ghouls, and their king it is who tolls, and he rolls, 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 a pain from the bells, and his merry bosom swells with the pain of the bells, and he dances and he yells, keeping time, 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 in a sort of runic rhyme. Oh, the pain of the bells, of the bells, keeping time, 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 in a sort of runic rhyme to the throbbing of the bells, of the bells, 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 to the sobbing of the bells, keeping time, 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 as he kneels, knells, knells, in a happy runic rhyme, to the rolling of the bells, of the bells, 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 to the tolling of the bells, of the bells, 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 bells the moaning and the groaning of the bell. One more, I think, and then we'll stop. Maybe two more. El Dorado. Gaily bedight, a gallant knight, in sunshine and in shadow, had journeyed long, singing a song in search of El Dorado. But he grew old, the knight so bold, and o'er his heart the shadow, fell as he found no spot or ground that looked like El Dorado. And his strength failed him at last, and he met a pilgrim shadow, Shadow, said he, where can it be, this land of El Dorado? Over the mountains of the moon, down the valley of the shadow, ride, boldly ride, the shade replied, if you seek for El Dorado. Then with something uh, not happy, but not necessarily dark either. A dream within a dream. Take this kiss upon the brow, and in parting from you now, that much let me avow. You are not wrong who deem that my days have been a dream. Yet if hope has flown away in night or in day, in vision or in none, is there therefore is it therefore less gone? All that we see or seem is but a dream within a dream. I stand amid the roar of a surf-tormented shore, and I hold within my hand grains of the golden sand. How few, yet how they creep through my fingers to the deep, while I weep, while I weep. Oh God, I cannot grasp them with a tighter clasp. Oh God, can I save one from the pitiless wave? As always see or seen, but a dream within a dream. Okay, I forgot how depressing that one was. I'm sorry, I kind of wanted it on a happy note. Uh, almost out of time, so I'll just say Happy Halloween. Remember to keep your... So probably won't watch this video until next year because by the time I post it,